Every year since 1901, the Nairobi International Trade Fair, organized by the Agricultural Society of Kenya, ASK, is a must-go event for Kenyan citizens living in and out of Nairobi every early October. The trade fair invites different exhibitors in the agricultural, industrialization, private and public sectors to showcase what they have to offer to citizens in terms of research services, technology, innovation, business opportunities, among others. On today's episode of Agri Expo, we visit Jomo Kenyatta's university's stand at the ASK showground. JQuat is known to be a leader in agricultural innovations, research and technology. Speaking on the technology and the lengths at which the university has gone to to make sure they come up with research and innovations to boost the agricultural sector in our country, the Vice Chancellor Professor Victoria Wamboingumi elaborates more on their plans. Uh, Jomo Kenyatta University started um, a long time ago and one of the main areas that it started with was agriculture. It also included engineering and technology, but agriculture has been one of our most important um, areas. Uh, we train students in the area of agriculture at bachelor's, master's and PhD level, but we also carry out a lot of research and come out with a lot of innovation in the area of agriculture. Today we are at the Nairobi ASK show and we are exhibiting some of our innovations in the area of agriculture. So we have the kitchen garden here, which is very useful for the mother who is living in an area where they don't have land. We have the new um, source of meat, protein, in our snails, and also crickets. And there's a lot more that we are doing here. So by coming here, we do tell people about our innovation. If we can get as many partners as possible, maybe from industry and elsewhere, who we can uh, talk to and see how we, we can work together in a partnership where we are able to commercialize our products, uh, I'm sure we would move faster than we are moving right now. For example, we also have a lot of machines that we, are, we have come up with, which can be very useful to, to, the, to the small uh, uh, enterprise uh, people. For example, for women, we have the brick maker, which is very easy to do, to use, but we need people we can partner with so that we can be able to make more of those. Through our division of research production and extension, we are coming up with ways in which we can be able to meet more people and then be able to actually transfer, see how to transfer our technologies to more people, maybe through incubations and through other ways. Agriculture is our mainstay. And uh, as is said, whatever you do, you must eat. So we are telling Kenyans that agriculture is very important and as a university, we, we are taking this seriously and we are coming up with more and more ways in which a Kenyan person will be able to benefit. The DVC of the university, Professor Mary Abukutsa, also shared insights on their research and how it benefits farmers and agripreneurs. We have researchers looking at research areas in various commodities along the value chain. Some of the areas that we are looking at are the vegetable crops in horticulture. We are looking at fruits like purple. We are looking also at coconut. We are looking at rice and also looking at the new technologies of exploiting indigenous foods like indigenous vegetables, indigenous crickets, and also snails. One of the challenges we have as researchers, we come up with technologies and sometimes it's very difficult to translate this information in a way that policymakers can take it up or even end users. So because of that, we find many of the research sit in our, in our shelves. So what we've done as a university is to engage other partners. We have engaged the media, for example. We have engaged the standard media group. We have a special uh, pull out of smart harvest and technology to be able to talk to the public. We have also engaged other uh, uh, platforms 
we do demonstrations, we go out into shows like today's Nairobi International Trade Fair, we are there, we were in Yeri a week ago, and then we try to have open days so that farmers can come to the university and in the simplest way possible be able to engage them at all levels. And this has worked very well. In addition, we have also uh, an organization that we are part of called LIWA. LIWA is linking academia with industry. So these are avenues that we are just trying to use so that we can be able to engage industry. Because any country, what is sold or any university cannot put out their, their outputs unless they also engage with the industry. So we are coming up with this kind of avenues that we can exploit. Coconut production is common along the coastal regions with many farmers making an average income from the sale of coconut fruits. But with value addition, coconut farmers would smile all the way to their banks. Jquat has come up with an innovation and a machine that can make pumice, which is a good soilless media free from diseases. Boniface Karaoke, a technologist at Jquat, elaborates more on the manufacturing system, especially to the coconut farmers. Manufacturing research here is a, a, a research here, uh, the only uh, research manufacturing research here that we have in Kenya. The second one, the other one is in Moi that deals with health. Ours looks at uh, enhancing the competitive of Kenya when it comes to manufacturing of uh, coconut value added products. And we are working uh, towards enhancing the productivity uh, in the coconut sector. We're working to improve the, uh, the farmers and the people that are working in the coconut value added products, in, uh, enhancing their capacity to produce more, enhancing um, their capacity to you know, develop themselves uh, economically and strengthen uh, their uh, 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 basis in terms of uh, you know, value addition of coconut uh, products. So, so far as a research chair, we have uh, been able to connect with uh, such groups. Uh, one of them that is already here in this uh, desk, on this desk is called Hazina Waja. They are working on uh, beauty and cosmetics, uh, coconut oil-based products. And we have worked with this group and provided to them a machinery that uh, they are using now and which has helped them improve on the on, on their quality on the quality of their products and also help them to produce more and thereby uh, increasing you know their capital base and we have also worked with other uh, SMEs uh, uh, by training them we have trained uh, a number of them like 50 and that way we are able to in, uh, help them increase their productivity Currently, we are working uh, a lot with the Kuala uh, County. Um, the uh, various groups that we are working with are from Kuala, and we are looking at uh, many products. We are looking at beauty and cosmetics, we are looking at food, we are looking at textile, uh, we, are, we are also looking at uh, you know, creating machinery for these groups. And uh, we are also looking at biomass and energy. We have seen a lot of, uh, you know, they've been waiting for people to work with. Of course, they have, there has been AFA, the NOCD directorate, eh, has worked a lot with them. But they've been looking for people that can continually, you know, uh, uh, help them increase their, their capacity. And therefore, they are, the, the farmers, they are quite uh, receptive, they have accepted. Uh, what we are providing uh, for them. They have given us their challenges, they go through, and we are working very closely with them, and they are happy about uh, what we are doing so far. Pumice being a medium that is exported, now we can produce the product locally from the coconut husks, as Mary Wanjiro, a master's student at JQuad, explains. Most uh, people uh, away from the coconut region, they don't know how a fully mature coconut is harvested. So this is how a fully mature coconut is harvested. You find that uh, what is of interest to most, it is the inner, which is now the fruit that we all know. But we forget about the husk, the outer part. You find that uh, after the husk, uh, the coconut itself, it has been removed. 
uh, this coconut husk it, it is thrown away and becoming number one polluting agent at the coast region. So as, a, as the postgraduate who are doing research, we are focusing on the value addition of the coconut husk. You find that uh, in this coconut husk, we have two products. One of them uh, is coconut, uh, these are the fibers, and cocoa peat, a, 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 a byproduct. While you produce, you process now the fiber, a byproduct you have the cocoa peat. Now, on coconut uh, fiber, uh, this uh, mainly it is used for rope making and the mat, but you've gone further to find uh, ways in which you can utilize the fiber. You find that uh, we have a product that we've gotten after um, a chemical uh, process on the fiber, which is uh, cellulose. This cellulose is the same product that is in cotton. So you find that uh, cotton is used mainly in textile. So if uh, maybe in Kenya uh, the cotton production goes lower, still uh, fiber will produce the raw material for uh, for textile industry. Another product that we found from uh, the coconut fiber, fiber is a product called hydrogel. Hydrogel is the raw material for uh, sanitary towels, for diaper, the hygiene product. So you find that uh, the, uh, the good thing about uh, the hydrogen from the fiber, it is natural. So after some time, it is going to decompose as compared to the synthetic diapers that we have in the market. Now that is the uh, products of the coconut fiber. Now we have this uh, byproduct called cocoa peat. Cocoa peat can be fully used as a growth media. You find that uh, here in Kenya, cocoa peat it is imported tons and tons uh, from Indonesia and Sri Lanka. But here in Kenya, we can process our own. Um, cocoa peat is mainly used in flower farms for flower propagation. It can be used for plant production. You can see these are my lettuce grown fully on cocoa peat and it is uh, dust free and the advantage of it is it holds water for quite a longer time. So uh, the frequency of irrigation is going to reduce, saving the water that it is being scarce in Kenya. Another thing, it is natural. So it is free from pests, free from uh, diseases. So that gives you an assurance that you will have clean, uh, clean uh, products, the, the crops. It requires some uh, knowledge on how to do it. You find that the coconut, uh, you can have the coconut oil, but there is a technique of, of doing it, eh? like having the, the virgin oil. There's that technique. There are those who use the briquette. Eh? We have this briquette, they use it as shako, but the, the disadvantage is uh, it is so smoky. But we've come with an idea or a technology in which you can have the briquette. The briquette, they are smoke free. So you carbonize the, the shell and then you find an, a binding agent to bind the dust. To utilize the, the locally available material. They have, you know, you know that uh, poverty is, uh, is prevalent, uh, prevalent in, in the coast region. So if they use whatever they have uh, to make money, they can improve their living standard. Tons are imported here in Kenya. So if we process our own coconut, cocoa peat, so, and uh, we have market, it can be uh, well uh, marketed there, yes. We are taking a short commercial break, we'll be back with more.